Let's go ahead and get my first guest. He has just recently got his comic book out, his campaign. Uh, I can't wait for him to talk about it. His name is Anthony Sika. How are you, doing? Hey. Thank you for Hell, coming. Hell, Katie did. Hell. So, Hell. So I got to tell you, um, you gave a little thanks to EVS. I want to give you a real quick history of how I got involved in crowdfunding and, yeah. and comic skate and all that good indie stuff. Yeah. Way back in 2019... I started publishing a comic book. It was a supernatural based uh, indie comic called Oh My God. I printed six issues, okay? And, and real quick summary, it's about a, a girl who does a one night stand with an angel and she becomes possessed by the, the old holy God. And, uh, but then we later find out, spoiler, that it's actually the devil. Very supernatural TV show, CW, Buffy the Vampire Slayer based Ooh. stuff. I, I was not, I knew who Ethan Van Skyver was from his DC work, but I really wasn't into the, I was very apolitical at the time. Okay. Well, I went on a bunch of YouTube channels in 2020, uh, whatever, when January 6th happened or whatever. And I, I wanted to talk about my comic book and all they talked about was politics, politics, politics. Well, I actually posted on Twitter. I got blood honey in the mail from Ethan and I was like, Hey, great book, Ethan, blah, blah, blah. Right. I got every single person that I was on a YouTube channel with all these SJW folks they started slamming the hell out of me online, calling me a Nazi, calling me a, a right alt, an alt right person. And I had no idea what they were even talking about. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought I was, they took down every YouTube video that I was on. They actually wiped it. And EVS, who didn't know me from squat, by the way, went online defending me in the chat, followed me the whole deal. And you know what? That meant a lot to me. Since then, I've actually crowdfunded three books, uh, two copies of a book called Venerella, which is a, a horror sci-fi Barbarella spinoff with a, a, a vampire warrior queen from Venus. I actually finished the book in 2022. I got a big campaign for me, big campaign, but my wife passed away and I couldn't finish it. I couldn't draw. I couldn't finish it. I felt there was a lot of karma going my way poorly, what have you. This January, I inked my last page, lettered the book, and it is fulfilled now. I think I have like 10 more packages to Amen. send to England and Hungary or whatever. And I'm promoting right now uh, Misty America uh, to uh, early 2022. I had published Misty America issue number one. It's an old school 90s style black and white comic book. Um, this sort of stuff. She's a time traveling gun toting big haired blonde, you know, commando who's trying to avenge the death of her sister. She joins some super black ops, uh, company. They turn out to be time travelers, you know, go, go figure. And she's fighting in the past to save the future. Now oh. in between Misty America one, I did Venerella one and two because I was trying to mix it up. I was trying to be diverse with my storytelling, but truth be told, uh, I just launched on Indiegogo. I think the links in the channel yeah, there, and I'm in the chat here for you guys. go check it out. I mean, I actually have it on screen. If you, I don't know if you want to share my screen. Yeah. You... Yeah. Go ahead and, and get that set up. I'm going to bring in another guest. Yeah, sure. You know him. He has been here. He's been here before. Whoa. Niobe. Whoa. Hey. Live in 2D. That's hey, right. Niobe. I'm live in 2D. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm no 3D assets allowed here. I, I'm a 2D <laughs> asset. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the I'm the kid that should have had Kenny's job in South Park, but I didn't make the cut in the pilot. <laughs> 
See, they, they say every VTuber needs to have a backstory. That's my backstory. There you go. I just want to come in and hang out for, for a few minutes. I'm not here for a long time, but for a good time. You know, I want to thank Katie did for uh, inviting me into her green room where now I have unlimited access. <laughs> you know, there you go. That's it, man. And uh, I want to say to, to you and to uh, to your followers, to your watchers, anyone that backed my, my Niobe Outbreak 3 Kickstarter campaign, thank you. It ended late last night with $18,600 Canadian, which is about a buck fifty. Yeah. So appreciate it. Wow, that. way to go, Niobe. So we're going to be hard at finishing that up. And, you know, we're going to send out surveys soon and all the good stuff. Nice. Oh my gosh, Novi, that's so cool. That is yeah. so cool. I'm so happy. How does it feel like oh, that it's well, done? I, I, it's always a relief. You know, a campaign, it's like going to a con. There's like a convention high. And then when you're done with the con, there's kind of like that crash. You know, it's like, oh, what the hell am I going to talk about now for the next 30 days? The campaign's over, you know? Yeah. Well, that gives you more time to hang out with us and everything. Oh, so. Yeah. yeah. So what, I what's Mr. Yana in the next line? Uh, well, Go ahead. You know, well, I was going to say, I see Mr. Yanafui in the chat. He's he's a legend. Yes, Mr. Yanafui's here. That's, that's it, man. You got Mr. Fani, Mr. Yanafui watching you. You know you're making marks. You know what I mean? Oh, that's good. That's good to know. I I definitely enjoyed his content. And uh, it is an honor to have him here. So thank you, Mr. Yanafui. As so far sweet. as uh, what's next, we're doing a reprint of Niobe number two from back in 2016. It was all black and white and badly lettered by me. So... We're, uh, we're going to re-release it, but we're going to give it the George Lucas treatment. You know, it's going to get all colored and re-lettered and redesigned and repackaged. And then we'll do a Kickstarter for that. And then after that, it'll be Savage Sin number two, my my fantasy comic. Nice. You're a busy man. You're yeah. a busy man. I try to be. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm unemployed right now. You know, I had a job and then I went, uh, they went sort of tits up and I went on unemployment insurance for the winter, you know, collecting pogey. But um, that's soon coming to an end. So I'm going to have to start searching for a part-time job here soon. And all, all I need is a part-time job because with the comic and everything else, uh, that you know, it's a good supplemental income, but it's not enough to just purely live off of, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 So tell me we'll about Anthony and Misty America. Yeah. I don't know. Can I, uh, can I show a screen there? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> screen okay and uh, let's try that that working for you yeah there it is All right so misty america we have um as i said like i'm off to a slow start it must be a recession i have a uh, 225 dollars in the last 24 hours with five backers so i need some help with that but misty america um i have Here's art samples. I have uh, single book packages starting at just $15. Comes with two six by nine prints. I have different covers, a cover bundle starting at 35. And the really great thing is I have, tell me There's if that cover, here. look at that cover. That's a cover. <laughs> and, and by the way, nice I, love, cover. I, love I, that. Love, I love 90s cosplay photo covers. And I'm a photographer also. So, nice. you know, I like uh, I like to uh, the little glitzy uh, 90s, 80s stuff. And then the really nice thing is I have um, original art. I have one of the covers up for sale. It comes with all the comics, some posters, some prints. Uh, and, you know, there's no 3D assets. There's no digital art. Everything is blue line, you know, Bristol board inked pages. You see a lot of Kirby crackle there. You know, everything I do is uh, pen and paper, pencil, pen and paper, you know, everything. And uh, I have some of that stuff. And if you'd like, I have, I'm sorry, I'm scrolling. I'm causing some seizures for your audience. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry please, about it. Please. We're going to be uh, bringing if, it up a couple times throughout the if, night. So. If uh, these moving images cause you to have a problem, please look away. So and, I, I got uh, I'll click I'll click the video if you'd like. Yeah. Well, before you click okay. the video, hand it for you.
And this is my band also, so. Nice. Ooh, I love it. Not Gyra, but it's all right. Hey, anything. <laughs> So patriotic, man. I love that. So I love this American old thing. love it that is so patriotic man i love it that the ladies are oh well thank you thank you um real quick summary you know i'm not going to be vague about it misty america major misty lee warren she was a wrestler a professional wrestler her name was misty america in the ring her sister was killed in action in afghanistan she joined up she joined the military she was so good at her job that she was drafted and listed into a covert op that was a time traveling commando squad with different members from different points of history. She wow. was grabbed from 20, she was grabbed from 2020. There's people grabbed from 1618 and 1776 and 1964, all members of her, her group. And they're fighting anomalies in the past to save the future. And a little spoiler, maybe her sister's not dead. I don't know. Maybe she's a time traveler too. Who knows? But anyway, Ooh, issue two. Oh, I love it. Issue two is crowdfunding. I launched it last night at like 1230 in the morning or 1130, whatever. And I have a slow go. So if anybody be interested, again, singles 15, bundles 35. I do everything. Everything you saw there, everything's on Bristol board, everything's sequential art. This is what's called real storytelling. There's no 3D assets involved. Um, so, so truth be told, Misty America 2. And if you get Misty America 2, you can add on Misty America 1. There's not many left. I have maybe 100 issues with different covers, but they are available and you can catch up. And, uh, you know, make comics uh, indie again and support America, Misty America. So I, I got questions. Yes. All right. Let, let, let's get into it a little bit, Katie. You know what I'm saying here? Um, uh, real you quick, love before you start, my sketchbook, uh, real quick, let me get him get his. Is she based off the that Marine chick that no. was in the deck? Yes. I do know who you're talking about. Major Guns. Her name escapes me. The, her she name, was not based. Her name no. was Major Guns. At least yeah. there were, that was the sort of Marine chick in the WCW. Sure. Yep. Yep. Okay. But uh, but no, I just um, I just uh, I, it's it's like a mix between uh, Barbed Wire and Sergeant Fury. Is for, what it for, is. First comment I got for you: You yeah. sound like Brian Polito. Go ahead, that's Obie, a good yeah. thing. Well, you know, I love Brian Polito. So there you go. In your fact, voice reminds me of him, and, and almost your sales pitch, like Brian Polito, like like he is like the sham wow of, of comic book selling guys. You know, like like you know he's got like the slap chop and stuff, right? You know what I mean? Well, Venerella, my sci fi fantasy book, is kind of like my homage to um, my homage to Brian Polito, and my book 
issue oh, one, even though you can't see it, is dedicated to Stephen Hughes, the original there you go. artist. For Shout out, death. man. Rest in peace, brother, man. Yes. So my, my, my second question. Yes. Well, that, well, that's my comment. My first question to you is... Uh, you know, you, you, you love, obviously, the 90s bad girl stuff just as much as I do. I mean, that's what Niobe is. Um, the, the, the truth of it is, right? And some people are going to hate me for saying this. Uh, but if I'm to give real advice, right, which is what I try to do on my channel, is I would suggest to you that bad girl books do not do well on Indiegogo and that bad girl books thrive on Kickstarter. Really? Okay. Absolutely. Well, maybe I'll start a Kickstarter campaign and just don't tell John Malin, okay? Well, no, no, but but here's the thing, right? Like, so that's the whole thing about the CG. I'm not in CG, just for full disclosure. Sure. I'm a neutral guy. Sure. I associate with everyone. Um, and I do too, by the way. Yeah. And so, um, like, when it comes to Kickstarter, though, that's where all the sexy stuff is. Flat really? out, plain and simple. Look, okay. I'll, I'll tell you a story. I did a $22,000 campaign on Kickstarter. And I brought it over as a second chance campaign on Indiegogo. You want to know how much I made? Zippo. $63. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm and, doing better than that today. Yeah. So I'm all right. But, but at the end of the funding sure. period, because it was underneath $100, right. Indiegogo just flat out canceled the campaign. So really? if you could do 22000 on one side and barely get three backers on the other, what it tells you is two things. One. Uh, Indiegogo's visibility isn't what it used to be. Sure. Two is that each platform specializes in different genres, right? Sure. Kickstarter, Cthulhu, sexy girls, that sort of stuff. Indiegogo is more for your almost your classic golden age superhero stuff, right. like your jawbreakers and things right. of that nature, and and thicker books. Like I don't know how many pages your book is, but Indiegogo really loves like 60, 90 page books. Kickstarters really do a lot of floppies. You know what well, I mean? There you go. Well, thank you for that info, because to be honest with you, um, I had only, um, I guess I've been using Indiegogo as the devil, you know, kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Because I did my Misty America one on it. So Venerel uh, one and two, but, but I got to tell you something, uh, since you're bringing up a little controversy, um, I actually did Venerella number two. And I have this, um, I have this actual a book where she's chained up Venerella in like a dungeon and uh Indiegogo uh smacked me for it oh, and I said I said I was violating something and held my money for a few months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen, and, listen, uh, Kickstarter's a little bit more forgiving on that. They 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 have the rules too just like any other platform. Sure. You know, the show nudity and if there is sure, nudity, sure, just you know, you put a little black bar over or something like that. But here's the great news for you cuz now it gets even better, right? Tell me. The uh, well, here we go. You, you, you now, sales pitch. Thank you. This is great. You, well, you stand now to make more money, and here's why. Because you yeah. already got Misty America one. You ran it on Indiegogo, which yeah. means you have a fully done product that you can bring over to Kickstarter and cash in all over again. Oh, okay. Right? And then you run that campaign. You get the money from that, okay? Yeah. And, and, and then you bank that money to put towards either Misty America 2 or 3 or whatever it is you're going to do. And right. then when this campaign is done on Indiegogo, you go ahead and copy and paste it, throw it over on Kickstarter as a second chance campaign. Nice. Hey, Bob and KC, yes, she can throw a black man on a car, but she doesn't discriminate. She can throw any man on a car. Okay. Was that meant to be a death blow? Yeah, it was a death blow. And, and also, oh, no. and, uh, and by the way, Misty America, the one caveat that I didn't uh, describe, she is super powered because to undergo the actual time travel in the squad, they do a bunch of Deadpool, Steve Rogers type experiments on you. And her power is the harder you hit her, the more pain she suffers, the, the stronger she is. So she's kind of like you know, the the dude in the X Men Bishop, yeah, or Black Panther suit in the movies. Sebastian the Shaw, the Black King in X Men, was like that too. You just smack him, and he smack you back twice as hard. Exactly. Tired. So so any pain that she experiences, she multiplies it back at you and charges up. Um, maybe that's even uh, dirty wise. I don't know. The more pain she experiences, the more. You hit her, the more powerful she gets. But that sounds like a Kickstarter conversation. There you go, man. Yeah, so no, she's she, food she for has Yeah, my sketchbook 340, she has both powers and highly trained, but her powers became 
are a result of training and experiment that they had to do to to adapt her for time travel. Now, my, my next question is, is the book black and white? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, is that stylized choice or just financial reasons? It's a stylized choice and financial. So I'm going to, I'm going to say both uh stylized just because i'm a big fan of the 90s crow and everett hart so razor and all that stuff early mm -hmm. cyber frog uh and then for financial reasons um i was trying to put people together but i am the writer artist and creator and i didn't okay. really want to um color the book and money on coloring <laughs> yeah i i just don't like you know i it, the funny thing is i've been a creative director at an ad agency for my whole life um so i'm a graphic designer by trade but i'm not into coloring comic books it's just it seems like a lot and it is uh, it's a lot but it will give you more sales oh no doubt no doubt but again, we, we did the first five issues of Niobe in black and white. When we went to color, we went yeah. from four thousand dollar Kickstarters to eight thousand. Then it turned into sixteen. Then it turned into twenty four. Yeah. I don't know if we would have hit that if we were still in black and white. But yeah. I mean, the great thing about being your own boss is you call the shots, sir. Right. And obviously, I wouldn't if I wanted some money, I wouldn't be doing this. But uh, the <laughs> the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, I do it for my art. You know, not to sound pretentious, but I. I am my own boss as far as the art and the story. And I, I try and do what, what I know I can do. And I have, you know, 10 issues under my belt, I'm not a spring chicken, but the truth of the matter is, is that, um, you know, I just think, uh, I, I like indie black and white, you know, however, uh, like you just said, I just lost a job 15 years to it. Um, I was told my job did and they were going to outsource. And I'm like, well, good luck with that. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, as I said, this, this was kind of in the works um, as that was happening. So, you know, there's always time to pivot, but you know what, unlike uh, other people on the internet, I do take others advice and I take it to heart and, um, and I'm not an expert by no means. I just kind of like what I like to say. So yeah, the other option also is fund my comic. Yes, and again, devil, you know, I've only used Indiegogo, so I haven't really investigated into those things. And as I, I think I stated before you came on, I kind of, I've been out of the game for a little bit. Um, I passed away, and I kind of down for four and a half. I was on the scene. I wasn't going on YouTube. I wasn't was trending, but wasn't trending all that. And then I just wrote, hey, I got to fulfill a book. I took a book. I just a book. But you know, all these things I'm taking to heart. And I really appreciate uh, You're losing your, connection. Uh, yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say, I, I think I'm, we're, we're losing you there. You're, you're going, kind He's of going in and out. And sort of robot. But it all looks good, man. And these cosplay covers are awesome. Thank this you. is the type of stuff that Kickstarter eats up, man. It's the type of yeah. stuff I eat up. Like, I buy, like, the Red Sonya cosplay covers when I see them and things of that nature from Dynamite, man. Uh, so, you know, you, and you got 10 issues underneath you. But like you said, you got some 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 cloud in the game. So, yeah. that, you know, and I didn't know that. I, all I saw was issue number two. So I'm assuming this is, your, you know. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I published six independently before I did crowdfunding because I didn't know what crowdfunding was. So selling them out of the back of my car. Right. <laughs> doing shows, doing conventions and selling them out of the back of my car because I, I didn't know. So said before oh, I, was, I'm, I was only going to be on here for a short bit. So so I'm going to stick to that. I got, I got to run and do my thing. But with that yeah. being said, I would like to personally invite you, Anthony, you know, some night. When you're free, come on over to my show. You know, we'll, we'll also promote your book. You know what I mean? Love to. Would uh, love to. Also, Thank I started you. up a, a green room of my own, Katie. You've inspired me. Okay. <laughs> I know. And, so thank you for that. And you're in. You're in there. So if you ever want to just drop into the show, Katie, you're more than welcome to do that. And awesome. um, I'll, I'll plug myself just one second here, guys. Though the Niobe campaign is over, you can still order Niobe Outbreak Number One to your comic book shop through Diamond Magazine. Go ahead and, and and please do that. We are you know published with Antarctic Press. We this is our sixth time hitting the shelf, so uh, you know Kickstarters, Indiegogos. I get it; they can be expensive, shipping this and that. But if you're willing to wait in the month of June, no, it's May. In the month of May, I think 
Niobe Outbreak 1 Nay. will be on the shelf. So there you go. There you go. All I right, Katie and Anthony. There. Nice meeting you, sir. Good luck with great meeting you, sir. Look to talk to you soon in the, in the future, and you hope you guys have a great remainder of the show. And if you guys are still on when I'm done, I'll, I'll check back in. You know. All right, sounds good. Sounds right, good. Good out. seeing you again, Naomi. Take it Absolutely. easy. And congrats. He was All awesome. righty. Naomi's awesome. He really. I is. love that. I love that South Park uh, avatar there. <laughs> I know it fits him perfect. I don't know why. <laughs> really cool yeah this is really neat i like this yeah thank yeah i, I, so, I like how it's so american and it's it's well obviously it's like sure it's i mean you know but i mean it's very american it's very it's I'm, beating, story about, I'm beating i'm beating the theme to death you know you might as well <laughs> well you know to be honest with you this is this is something that's appropriate you know that's it's not you're not like trying to say anything. It's not like political. It's just no. American. It's no, just well, American. It's just, well, you know what it is, is it's, it's her name was Misty. So when she was a wrestler, the gimmick was instead of saying Miss America, they called her Misty America. So it's Misty America, you know, instead of Miss America. And, uh, and it just stuck because then when she became a super powered uh, commando, time traveling commando it just fit and you know her 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 gimmick is uh you know why she fights in a star spangled bikini and cowboy hat well that's just my preference but um if any and if anybody's uh familiar with the movie doa based on the video game uh jamie presley the actress in that movie uh she played a heroine a a fighter in the movie and um and that was her outfit. So that was kind of my inspiration there. So if anybody's familiar with DOA, the movie starring Jamie Presley, who, by the way, Jamie Presley was the 90s uh, Margot Robbie. She looked just like Margot Robbie. Uh, yeah, Tina from DOA, exactly. Nao Niobe got it, got it. You know, and that was kind of my, that was kind of my visual uh, um, kind of aesthetic, so. I just went with that. Thought it was easy. And uh, Nadia Sturgill says she fights in a bikini because she needs her skin exposed to harness the power of the exactly. sun. Exactly. Yeah, or the power of anything. Power. The power of the male gaze powers her up. But uh, but also, you know, she um, and and what's nice about this issue is the first issue she went was back in 1998, fighting in the Middle East, and in this issue she's in 1944 in france with the nazis fighting nazis so you know i like that yeah it's, it's, it's just in her story too it's like it's mystery but it's, it's like sad and mystery and yeah um kind of like suspense a little bit i would say maybe because of the, the of her story yeah well it's just about all that yeah it's just about her her sister uh most of my stories are about family uh, Venerella, which as soon as Misty's done, I'll be I'll be doing Venerella three. Venerella is the same thing. Venerella is like um, a soap opera set on Venus. She has yeah. a mother who's dead, uh, a lover husband who's been um, who's thought to be dead, imprisoned, and then she has a scheming father and brother who, although she should be the rightful queen, they want her dead. And then she's got a backstory with some people on Mars. It's a whole thing. Um, Venerella is actually a 32 page book and Misty America is a 24 pager. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, actually as Niobe uh, was thinking, uh, was uh, suggesting maybe I do need to look in Kickstarter to supplement my income because, uh, because uh, I guess all the pervs hang out there, <laughs> or they like the babes there, which I which I've heard, which I've heard, and I know that you know uh, behind me, you'll see there's a big uh, Billy Tucci she poster on the wall. Uh, I have an autographed Billy Tucci she poster and a Michael Turner, the late Michael Turner from Witchblade fame. Um, oh, nice. I, I had those autographed at conventions in the early nineties when I met Billy and, and, uh, Michael and, and all those and, and, uh, Brian Polito and a bunch of those, uh, 
those bad girl pioneers, which uh, I kind of fell in love with that genre at the time. Yeah, I mean, that it's you know what it's I like the '90s too, the the sex appeal because of like um, you know, like the Miller like you know uh, commercials sure. and their posters and count sure. like you know it's that's what it feels like. I mean, I know it's a little older, but that that natural look and showing skin and not having no shame for it you know it's it's actually nice to see guys in this in this community try to make their women look amazing well katie i'm I'm probably just i'm I'm guessing i'm 20 years older than you so i was involved in spring break in 1989 in daytona florida Uh, um you you know um (laughs) Back then, it wasn't that it was politically correct or incorrect. It was just fun. And mm-hmm. the way they sold products and the way they, and this is pre-internet, the way we sold products, whether it be print magazines or comic books or whatever, you have good looking gals and good looking guys. There's nothing wrong with it. And the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, um, you know, um, it's you know I see my sketchbook 340 to digress a little bit, uh, Bill yeah. Mouse, Bill Mouse, yeah, uh, Nira, huge influence on me. Nira, uh, she, um, Razor from Everett Hartso, all that stuff. Um, you know all that bad girl stuff, and then the Jim Lee, uh, Gen 13, J. Scott Campbell, um, Wildcats. You know, and look at the X Men, Jim Lee's X Men. And Rob Liefeld's Young Blood and and X Force, all the babes were babes, you know. And yeah. that's what made that's what made the audience buy the comics. You had the super buff dudes, and you had the babelicious uh, women in the comics. And and my thing is in in Misty American Venerella, um, I do like the bad girl and like really showing off the female form and the faces and all that. But mm-hmm. true. Old, but truth be told, um, you know, there's a story there too. There's a story there, and I have the end of the story and the beginning of the story. So no matter whether I do three issues or six issues, I know how it starts and I know how it ends. And the cool thing is, when you buy my books, which I hope you will, um, they oh, all have, they it. all they all have a cliffhanger at the end. Every issue has a cliffhanger so that you're like, what the F just happened? I can't wait till the next issue, you know? And, and now that I've gone through my tragic period of my life, I'll be putting out my issues more regularly. Venerella one and two came out like, you know, I had those done in like six months of each other. I put two issues out in six months, but then I had the little, speed bump in my life that kind of forced me to step back. Um, I have a teenage son. I had to take care of personal and professional things. Mm. Like that. So, but yeah, my next book is going to be eight pages and it's going to cost 70, it's going to cost $175. It's going to be eight pages as James Coon just said, uh, making fun of, I guess, Eric July's, um, um, little sketchbook there with the white cover i don't know if you saw that katie no i don't know where um a lot of people online have been sharing and i think um i think evs had on on trash cast a few nights ago apparently uh ripaverse put out a book and it was a sketchbook oh yes yes yeah yes. for oh, isom yeah. and it was only yeah. eight pages and it was eight pages with no cover it was a it was a draw your own white cover, kind of sketch cover, and seventy five dollars. Well, no, um, James Coon, uh, who super chatted you for almost oh yeah, $10. no, you're good. I just I would I always let my guests try to finish their thoughts. Yeah, no problem. Mine is all, mine is only fifteen dollars, and it's twenty four pages, and it's a real cover. You don't have to draw it yourself. It's there. And I don't do anything in Times Roman, and I make sure I have my lines spaced out. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Katie did. Um, that is some weird stuff for yeah. a for a multi million dollar company. Uh, you know, allegedly, the amount of stuff that slips through that no one looks at is beyond my belief. So, oh, I know it's, it's almost insulting. Uh, James Coon, 
Thank you so much for the 999. You are my first super chat of the night, which by the way, guys, I got a new little clip. Thank you to Wizard of Word uh, Warplay. He is uh he made me a clip and uh Wordplay, excuse me. And uh and it's it's a $20 super chat clip and he personally made it for me and it's so good. I think it's it's a little catchy. I think it's 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 I mean Tony's is pretty good. Let's let's be real. His is amazing. But Wizard of Wordplay really hooked me up tonight. So if you're interested to see that, that that won't happen unless uh for uh unless I get a twenty dollar super chat, that's when it will be a bit be available for. Uh but for the ten for the nine ninety nine, I've got something special for you. And of course, thank you so much, James Coon, because you say get We'll get an art book with eight pages and cost $75. Jeff said, I like the art. Hope it goes well. Yeah, I, I, I really like what you got going here, Anthony. It's, it's, it's so different. I love things like this. How it's just everybody has their own style. And it's, it's, I don't, it's hard to explain. I don't know. It's just everybody has their own unique way of, of drawing their, their characters and heroes and stuff in the comic books. And uh, so I greatly appreciate that. James Coon, this is, this is your clip. Thank you so much. Let's, let's just sit down. Look, I got a gun out there in my purse. Huh. And up to now, I've been forgiven and forgetting because of the way I was brought up. But I'll tell you one thing. If you ever say another word about me or make another indecent proposal, I'm going to get that gun of mine. And I'm going to change you from a rooster to a hen with one shot. Thank you so much, James Coon, for the 999. I appreciate it. Here is the man himself, the wizard of wordplay. Those AI songs are earworms. Trust me. Oh, I... Wizard, I have to tell you, I, I kind of listened to it several times in the room because it was so good. It's like, oh, I want some, I want more. Give me more. Like, of the, I just want the whole song of it. That would be funny if you had a whole song of that. Oh, so good. But, uh, Katie, can so, you enlarge? Yes, you thank you so much, Wizard of Warplay. So, and then we have, uh, I heal a, oh, hi, hello there for 100. Michael Turner, Supergirl was so perfect. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Everything everything Michael Turner did was perfect. Uh he lit the world on fire uh at Image when he came on to Witchblade. And then he of course broke from Top Cow and did his own uh his own book Fathom, which is what's hanging on my wall over here. Um and then, you know, what it was is Marvel and DC had like a bidding war to get him. And Marvel lost out and he did Batman Superman or Superman Batman where they reintroduced Supergirl and I think he did like six or seven issues and I just heard like I was listening to Rob Liefeld podcast or something the other day and they were the top selling single comics back then wow. 2002 three whatever it was and I gotta tell you I remember them on the stand and you know what? And the thing that I want to say about Katie, I want, I want to bring back something that you said that was really important. And here's what's missing, in my opinion, from comic book artists in general. Art is subjective. Everyone has a style. But the problem is, is that a comic book artist is not a photographer. He's not he or she is not supposed to render comics in reality. And by the way, you could say that like EVS, for example, he's got a very Brian Boland type style, which he mm -hmm. would, you know, he'll confess to because that's one of his idols. But the thing is, an EVS picture or panel, you can tell and see like if EVS does a cover, you can tell that it's an EVS cover from across the lobby at a convention. Yeah. You can tell a Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Frank Miller, John Byrne, John Buscema, George Perez, um, Stephen Hughes that I mentioned from Lady Death, a Billy Tucci, Aaron Lopresti, Shane Davis, John Malin, all of these people, both new and older comic book artists, a Jack Kirby, for example, they may not be perfect anatomy, style, and they may not be everyone's cup of tea, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, for example. But you can tell their art from across the room at any convention. Katie, could you enlarge me for a moment? Yeah, let me do that. Of course. Let me, uh, there you go. 
So for example, this new cover of Misty America 2, this is yeah. my pen on paper, all right? If nice. you you're familiar with my work and you're across the room. Yes, you know, you know that it's mine. Whether it's your cup of tea or not, you're like that's an Anthony Sika. The same thing is if you see this interior page, you're like that's Anthony Sika's work. The same way if you see this old cover from like 2 years ago, it's the same artist, the same work. The line work consistent. The style is consistent. You can see this right here, this banner. Yeah. This is the cover. Okay. Oh, nice. It looks like my stuff, no matter what. My Venerella. I like how they look. They just... Look. See that? Ooh. That is this. Wow. There's no, cool. there's no 3D assets. This is real pen on paper. And the thing is, again, the style... Whether you like it or hate it is still all me. Just like Bill Mouse, Michael Turner, Niobe, any artist worth his beans, you know their style from across the room. The problem with comics today, both indie comics and main street comics, and more importantly, our favorite company that I'm not going to mention the name, um, their comics all look generic. And you yeah. can't tell one artist from another. In fact, I have an idea. I have a feeling that the new comic that we're going to get from them that begins with a, a Y, I have a feeling that every page is going to be indistinguishable, even though there's several different artists working on it. I think that... People need to find their style, like mu in music, in art, in theater, and in TV. If everything's homogenous, and you and everybody's got a house style, like I look at some Marvel books now, and I'm not dissing Marvel, so to speak, but a lot of the covers and the interiors just look like crayon explosions to me, and they don't have a lot of lines, and you can't even. You can't even see the anchor underneath. I think it's just pencils with digital on top of it, and it's good to go. And if that's the way they do it, that's great. But for an old guy like me who grew up looking at John Byrne comic books in 1976 and who's met George Perez 15 times in his life and sat and watched him draw, you know what? People need to find their style and style is what's missing in art in general. Everybody's trying to look like everybody else and no one has their unique style. And, you know, one of your, uh, one of your um, chat, one of the people in the chat brought up Bill Mouse, M-A-U-S. He has a, a book. He did Zen and then uh, Nira, Nira X. That was like this bad girl, black and white, then color space Barbarella type comic. He had a style and 30 years later, his books still look the same. You know, he hasn't tried to look any different. A dog does not try and be a cat and a cat does not try and be a dog. You know, you do what you do. Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, all those guys from Image, Mark Silvestri, they all look, you know, they, they stick to their guns and you could see it. From across the convention, whether you're at whether you're at New York Comic Con or MegaCon or Orlando, whatever you're looking and you're like, wow, there's a Michael Turner, there's a John Byrne, you know. And one day, hopefully, they'll say there's an Anthony Sika. And even if you think it sucks, you're still gonna say there's an Anthony Sika. I recognize it, and that's all you wish for as an artist is to be recognized that that's your style and that's what your work is. Excuse, sorry. I love it. I think it. I, I like. So it's different from anybody else's, really. And I feel like it's your style is consistent. You know what I'm saying? So I really, um, 
I feel like you're doing something that not many people can copy your style. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. you know, well, um, it's like, well, it's like, as a, I, I'm also a musician and people always talk about people like Eddie Van Halen. It's not the equipment. It's how he plays. It's his, right. you know, it's the fingers. It's not the guitar. It's the fingers. And you know, that's yeah. the truth. That's, that's or, what it, that's what art's about. Well, or you could be like me. I can, I, uh, I can't tune a guitar, but I could tune a radio. So, <laughs> uh, make it a witch. Oh my gosh, James Coon, you really do want to see that clip. Well, good. Thank you so much for the $19.99, the $20, I'm going to call it. I am now curious of your new clip. And it is sad that a woman cannot be sexy or look beautiful, but men can be sexy or handsome. Yeah, it's really sad. I, I don't, I, I, honestly, like if I see beautiful women like that, I'll tell me like, okay, I need to go to the gym. Or I need to, you know, get off my ass a little bit. You know, it's 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 inspiring. Like we need to see some more beautiful women, you know, uh, in these comics and, and movies and stuff. It's been in games. I mean, it's been really, really sad how you're kind of like shamed for looking hot. Like <laughs> you know, it's like what? I, I I think there's a double standard because all those actresses in in Hollywood. They all show up at the premieres dressed scantily and sexy, but yeah. they're not allowed to be portrayed like that in movies anymore and things like that. And what's so funny is um, everybody's making a big deal about this uh, ingenue named Sydney Sweeney, um, who was in Madam Web. She's she was in she's a hot actress. Yeah. She's very beautiful. Um, She's, I think she may even be conservative. Not that that matters if you're looking at her, but the point is, is that, <laughs> but the point is she's, blonde, she's blonde and very busty and yep. people on the internet are going gaga on her, gaga over her. And I think to myself again, as an old man, I'm like, dude, back in the nineties, every girl on TV and the movies looked like that. Every yep. single one it, we had, we had supermodels on every magazine. And the truth of the matter is, um, you know, it was uh, it was always accepted, and because it was selling something, giving it away for oh, sorry. free. Oh, <laughs> sorry. the button. Sorry. <laughs> no, go but, ahead. Finish that. My bad. <laughs> no, no problem. I'm just saying, you know, that's something that, um, you know, was a, that, that was the norm to have beautiful people. What's up, B. A. Turner? What's up, B. A. Oh. By the way, real quick before I play your clip, um, James B. A. Turner, thank you for becoming a member and uh, great job on Reality Based. You did very good. I caught in parts of it. I do plan to go back and listen to it all the way through. Um, but real quick, I do want to say, uh, hearing your story about you know your you and your family and what you and your wife do to you know raise your raise your child and uh, as a parent, I can so relate, and I have, I have more. Um, I have, I give you more praise for for being such a wonderful family man and great to your wife and your kids. It's really good that you guys got that kind of teamwork, and uh, you know, I, it, very good story. And so, thank you so much, Bay. You're awesome. All right, look, guys, you want to see this clip? Here we go. Your generosity truly means the world to me Detracting with us or supporting comics, yay Make this stream truly great <laughs> That's so good Oh, it's so good Like, I was like, oh, I want to, I just want to, you know <laughs> Oh my gosh, so much. Thank you so much, Wizard of Wordplay. And thank you so much, James Coon, for that $20 super chat so we can all listen to it. So yes, that is, uh, I think I'm going to have a little, you know, little ringer going here, you know. Is, is, every, is everyone subscribing and liking this uh, video, uh, Katie? Oh yeah, don't all forget right. to like and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank y'all for support. BA popping in to say hi, y'all. Thank you. B.A. Turner has been uh, promoting my book uh, ad nauseum on Twitter or X. So thank you, B.A. And forget, oh, he's, uh, 
He Forget about a, that I mean, debate the other night that you shared. Oh my God. Was... Let me tell you something. Our our dear friend BA has uh been a busy man this yeah. week. Yeah, Had not as busy day. as that guy playing the drums in the video though. <laughs> so I plan to get a clip out of that. I'm trying I'm working on that. Oh Don't worry, because I told BA I said I'm gonna get some clips out of it. That was pretty funny. It was um, hysterical. But it, it that was that was awesome. I, I don't know. That was just that, that, that night was so good. I mean, but yeah, BA's been busy, you know, dominating that debate with Tim. That guy Tim got on so reality mad. Days. That guy Tim got so mad and rude at the end. He was just dropping oh, I know. bombs and calling him a retard. It was like, what's going on? Civil discussion went off the rails. <laughs> yeah, he, he was a little punk bitch. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, check it in, chat. Yeah, that's right, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you like the song. Uh, but no, B8, like I said, he did so well in that debate. And then he was on Reality Base today getting interviewed. And, you know, as his, he's seen uh, more people back at the campaign. His, his channel numbers are going up. So it's well-deserved. B8 re works really hard, you know, he to find the time to come out to get those videos for everybody to see. They're really good, by the way. And then, you know, doing doing his comic, working on the next, uh, you know, story, the next novel. Uh, he is a busy man. And, you know, I, I want to see him succeed. I want to see him grow. Uh, he's just like me and Tony and everybody else. We, we just want to come on here and um, at least for, I'm not, I don't have a comic book, but for the other guys, you know, get their stories out there and then help others get their campaigns out. Um, so uh, it's, it's. It's, we really want to see him grow. And so be sure, guys, let me, uh, let me do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and share his, uh, his links to his campaign and uh, to his channel. I have like this list of everybody's links because I'm on, I'm a mod on a couple channels. So I've got a ton of links here. Here we go. So this is, this is a uh, BA's uh, channel. And uh, and Anthony, I've got, I'm adding your link to to my little notebook here on the computer. Yeah. Uh, and that's his channel, and of course, this is his campaign. Uh, the art is magnificent. If you're into gargoyles and stuff, like if you like the the show back in the day with Disney, like I did, uh, this is this is the one for you guys. So go check it out. And of course, you know, I got I'm gonna put Misty America. You guys go and back this campaign. I'll help our buddy out. I really like the look. I am going to back it. Um, well, I'll so, give you. Uh, I'll give you a couple. Special, you know. I'll give you a couple of special surprises in there, Katie. All right. Okay. All right, but I do want to back it. I do want to support. You know, you got mouths to feed and bills to pay and a book to get cool. out. Of you. So, um, I I do want to um, support you. And uh, which, by the way, as I guess will be a good way to transition here in a minute because we're going to do some trash casts nice. watching here. Um, I know that EVS, uh, he's, I'm sure he's way ahead, but he did do a reaction to Sean, um, uh, Shane Davis, excuse me, and his wife. Uh, to, uh, we're talking about the letter they got. Um, so before we transition that, because we're going into trash casts, uh, get her, get her. I call Lugu. <laughs> I can never flush her. I, I can never pronounce her name right. But uh, he, uh, he's got an amazing clip they put out. Um, BB Comics came out with their little uh, second trailer that looks really good that we're going to show later tonight. But let me show this guy since we're going to be transitioning into trash cast. Awesome. Let me just show you. Isn't that so fucking cool? <laughs> that is awesome, man. I, you guys are both knocking it out of the ballpark. You really, really are. Uh, I've been kind of watching him all week, him doing it, you know, because he plays actually, if you guys, if you watch like um, him uh, doing the uh, progression of the Cyber Frog animation, seeing him go through the whole process and what he's doing, 
uh, not only get to see that, but he's got a great playlist of like really good music. So if you're working at home and you want to put something on the background, do do it because his playlist is really nice. It's so like chilled and you know, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, but you know, guys go check them out as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so how about that shit yesterday with the convention, man? That was some bullshit. That was crazy. Crazy. Uh, you know, I know Tony was really looking forward to, to going. He's, he said he's still gonna. He's he said that uh on a stream tonight that he's still planning to to go. But yeah, I was watching at like one in the, at one or two in the morning. Uh, Shane Davis was in bed talking to them, and they were talking about still going and hitting the convention floor. But I don't know. EVS seemed a little wary about doing that, and uh, probably for good reason. But man, you know, I saw C two E two on X uh, Twitter today. And they had, we we're promoting the event and people were just dogpiling on them about, you know, how hypocritical it was to say that you're inclusive, but you're banning people because of their ideology is crazy. That is insane um, to even think that way. You know, uh, I don't care. Yeah. I don't, I mean, you're, you that's like minority report stuff. We're going to keep you out in case you do something. And they, they, they just want to, they want to sell comics and meet their fans and they have every right to do that. I, exactly. You know, I mean, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, Storenko or EVS, what's the difference? It's these people are, are, are just idolized, um, amazing talents that should, you know, they should be able to interact with their fans. And I guarantee you, most of the people were just going for those three, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, that's a shame. You know, I'm in the, I'm in Florida when we have Megacon in Orlando. Um, a lot of, you know, comic skaters are there and no one has a problem. No one cares, you know, they don't care. And, Mark Brooks oh. could be there and John Malin could be there or Aaron Lopresti could be there. It doesn't matter. They don't care. You know, no. it's a shame. It's, 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 I just don't understand these people. Like, I really hope, uh, I really hope though a lot of the folks get their refund from there. You know, like I, I would fight it. I'd be calling customer service and everything. I would be fighting it every day being like i want my money back like you cancel them not me you know i saw That's anna the reason that, i was going yeah i know anna was talking about they should be in a chuck e cheese and just have a their own convention <laughs> some <laughs> night you know well it seems like that's what's probably going to happen they should and they would get you know it would be fine yeah i mean they and they've got so many things, talented people on the internet that would probably be more than happy to step in and contribute to help. You know, they don't have to do it all by themselves. It's right. It can be a team effort. Um, <clears throat> so I got it right here. I think right when he's about to awesome. talk about it. We're about an hour behind of Trash Cats that's live right now. But I figured we need to watch this part. And... Um, and uh, get see what Ethan says because I was going to do a reaction of, of this clip, um, this video that they put out, uh, Shane and, and Nancy put out. But I figured since he's reacting to it and I plan to watch Trash Cast tonight, might as well to kill two birds with one stone. So let's, uh, let's watch that. Uh, get my volume up. Let's see. Let's, let's hope the internet is good to me tonight. <laughs> A crazy thing to just expect these people to act normal. Expect fairness. Can y'all hear it good? It's cancel culture strikes again. Here we oh. are today. And I, I guess I, in this situation, am on the wrong end of the cancel stick. As uh, we were supposed to, Nine Lives Comics had uh, applied. <clears throat> Me and John Malin had approached Reed for C2E to him other cons too to uh get an exhibitor booth nine lives comics was going to put starlight cats and glorious rex 
books like Graveyard Shift and Godlike up on display. And of course, Ethan Van Skyver was one of the artists that was also included in this. Of now, course. we're going to talk about this, but uh, again, this is kind of a touchy subject. And this is, I just got the email from them the other day. Now, we had applied for this way back when, Yanzi. All right, so let me give a brief timeline to you guys. We spoke to a representative at Reed Exhibitions way back in July, all right, of 2023. We signed the paperwork for the booth in in August, and then we paid the deposit then as well. Which, by the way, I will say, uh, I remember when um, John and Shane were planning this. I actually watched that stream, um, and it was a particular stream where I think... Uh, PTP and a couple of people were like jealous and angry with Maylin and Shane doing something like this. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's that's what started all that. Well, it's been going on for a while, but that's when shit really hit the fan because PTP and a couple other people were getting on a stream and talking how they feel a little bit betrayed and this was planned behind their back when really this is just they're doing for everybody. Um, uh, like I said, it was a while back, so I'm trying to remember, but I do remember that stream where they were talking about it. They were EFAP in a PTP stream. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and I actually bought the, and it's in my intro, um, actually, I bought the, uh, I went on that campaign, the Variant campaign, um, uh, Variant Covers campaign or whatever it was called. And uh, I got EVS's cover. Yeah. Um, so that I did that super chat that was in my intro. Can I, <laughs> That's what it can was. I, can I spill some tea? I met PTP in person two years ago in Orlando. Really? And he was talking shit about EVS and the Comic Skate Kings back then. You know, I think I've heard other people say that too, Either that way. he's always been so shitty. And and um, and the conversation I had with him had nothing to do with like the whole thing nothing and he brought it up so that's my tea to spill there two years ago there was shit talking at a convention to a fan and fellow creator about comic comic skate kings so there you go well you know screw him you know what there's also a couple people out there too in comic skate that claim that they are and they're old heads of comic skate Right. And uh, being a little shitty and not very supportive of what's going on here. Um, so there, yeah. there's, I'm sure there'll be more to follow behind PTP. Yeah. And uh, good riddance. You know, I, I always thought that guy looked a little weird. Well, you know what the shame of it is? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spill some artistic tea, too. Um, I, had, I had a few of his comics, his Johnny Phantasm, and I kind of liked them. They weren't bad. You know, so the thing is, if he had just made his art do the talking instead of doing talking, maybe, you know, he would still be in that circle and benefiting from the, um, you know, that circle, so to speak. But he was always talking trash about them, always, for, you know, so it's a yeah. shame, you know. Like I said, I know a couple of old head CGs yeah. that are doing that right now as we speak, so yeah, um, pathetic. All right, let's get back. Now we paid the second half of the deposit in January this year. Now throughout all this time, we've been receiving regular communications from them, just like any other exhibitor would, telling us things like, okay, these are the things you need to do as an exhibitor. Here's an exhibitor template, blah, blah, blah. We were basically in every line of communication with them. And we were even invited to put up our company profile on their right. website, which you guys will have noticed has been taken down. Now right. for about two whole weeks, our company profile set up there. With Ethan, John Millen, and Shane Davis all listed in there. And suddenly, right. for some reason, that's a problem. So what first started off as an email that said, hey, guys, we have to get on the phone. We're like, hey, can we keep this in the email? And they're like, no, you have to call us. And we ended up with a phone call that was sort of spicy. We were being yelled at that we broke the uh, terms of service uh, by we accused of subleasing the booth, which we bought the booth. Um, when you buy an exhibitor booth, you get 10 to 11 badges that come along with it. Because if you're an exhibitor, you have to have people helping you manage the booth. It comes with it. That is the package. Every exhibitor it gets at least 11 badges. And you can buy extras too. But 11 are handed to me. 
So, I, I mean, I'm not 11 people. Me and Yonzi are only two. So those badges are going to go to other people. And uh, John Malin, we first approached them and uh, we said, we're two LLCs. How do we build this? And uh, we want this booth. And they're like, well, you need to get a 10 by 10 or you can get a 20 by 20. And you too put it together and we just but for invoice reasons we can only bill and list one llc this was how we were navigated to do this by representatives of the commission themselves we were accused of subleasing which obviously wasn't the case we mm -hmm. both me and john approached reed and they said we could get a 10 by 10 or if we wanted a 20 by 20 that we just sit in the same booth and they built one company because they could only make the invoice out to one LLC. Yeah. Again, that yeah. was mine. So this was never a problem before when we were just trying to hand them our money and go forward. So they're basically saying that based on what we are saying in the exhibit description that we are showcasing both Ethan Ben Scarver and John Millen, which they claim is a violation of agreement. But you know, again, it's very weird. I believe that exhibitor booths usually have a lot of different guests coming in. Hey, um, guys, if you're an exhibitor booth, be careful. Apparently, you're not allowed guests anymore. And in the case of this booth, even John has drawn covers for Glorious Rex and Starlight Cat. So shouldn't he be allowed at the booth? Now, the second part, and this is the part that was really the issue because I kind of said, well, if you wanted these people to be approved, then you should have said, I need a list of your who's getting these badges. And right away, they kind of said, well, it's not just that. It's harassment. We have a no harassment clause at C2E2. And, uh, you know, there have been cases of harassment. And when I try to say, well, who is the person that's been harassed? They would just speak. It's open. such a bullshit. I mean, you know, harassment is a term that SJWs adopted. Because well, before we get started, that's ridiculous. Again, minority report stuff. You're saying that you're going to be harassed before you're harassed. It's you're 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 crying. I'm a victim with no no basis. You know, it's just crazy. It's so fucking stupid. Like, so what was the point of asking who was on, who was, you know, under, you know, who had the badges and all? Like, that's, they were just trying to, you know, find an excuse to make, I guess they just said, no, well, you know, we, we all have a problem with harassment. I, but it's, I'm, still, you know, but it's, a, it's a double standard because they're being harassed. It, these, these three are being harassed. <laughs> it's, yeah. it, there's no there's no harassment going on. It's the the it, the event hasn't taken place yet, so they're they're excluding them uh, to avoid harassment. That's not guaranteed or not guaranteed. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and and you know, I heard it's about Mark that Mark Brooks might have been. The one that shit stirred some of it a little bit or made a complaint. Um, I didn't get to listen to all of uh, morning uh, or afternoon trash cast. Uh, only caught bits and pieces at the end. Um, and Mark but I just think that you know, there's some people that just don't like Comicscape, so they they called and complained, and you know, Mark Brooks has threatened physical violence against EVS. Yeah. Like on so record, who's, who's the one that's first oh. tape of, there's video of it, you know, but I, it's crazy, it's crazy. It is crazy. Let's and see Mark what Brooke, and Mark say. Brooks sucks, by the way. I'll put that out there. He's terrible, terrible artist. So it's like, you know, let's let's start yeah. with that. Sounds like a bitter bitch, yeah, exactly. Because, so. uh you can't disprove it. You can't say, uh, I'm not harassing this person because they can say, yes, I feel harassed by your just being there. Um, James Coon, uh, do you know if they got their money back for the booth? Uh, I, I don't know yet. Um, probably, I have not, we'll probably find out here in just a minute. Um, but as far as I'm aware, I do not think they got their money back. No. Um, but I could be stand corrected. Like I said, this all broke like two in the morning and uh, I was already in the bed of sleep and I had a busy day with work and kids. So I was trying to catch up with all the 
geez, that was going on. But um, sorry, James Keenan. I, I imagine that they probably you know, get their money back. They're, they're going to find a way to keep it. Um, if I were them, give it, give the money back so you're not looking at further possible lawsuits because now you're holding, you know, not only are you not refunding the cut, you know, people who wanted to go see them, you now you're not going to refund those that, I mean, that's the whole reason that the campaign was to get this booth and everything set up. So they, they yeah, no, um, CT2 owes all of us who contribute, including myself, that refund. They promoted and, that show for eight months, seven, eight months, gave it promotion. You know, yep. it's sad. It was sad. You being there, uh, knowing that you're there, Frank Miller was trying to go to a convention in England. Frank Miller, and he was, uh, you know, his appearance was canceled because some fucking Muslim bitch uh, said that they didn't like, uh, she didn't like his uh, comic book, uh, what was it called, Holy Terror. Oh, I uh, remember he, that. Him being there, Frank Miller being there, it's going to make me feel unsafe. And so they canceled Frank Miller's, these people have to be stopped. This has to stop. There were people there who wanted to meet Frank Miller and some fucking piece of shit claimed that she felt harassed by his being there because of his past body of work. And now nobody gets to meet Frank Miller uh, because of one person, one whiny idiot's complaint. I mean, you got to think about that. That's insane. And that's the power that these people wield because of a word like harassment. I feel unsafe. I need to feel safe. None of these people feel unsafe. They make other people unsafe and unhappy. It's absolutely in insane. And, of course, they're doing the same thing here. Uh, the harassment. I feel unsafe. Uh, you know, these people have said things that are uh, oh, uh, who knows what they're over me on the phone and raised their voice. Later, we ended up getting all of this in writing in an email, which uh, we don't really feel comfortable right now with people involved and representatives sharing this publicly but soon it would be, probably. But we will read to you in writing what was said about the harassment. So C2E2 has this, what they call a code of conduct, which I expect every participant in any read exhibition event to participate in. And they're accusing us of, hmm, not limited to offensive verbal comments in relation to race, colors, national origins, gender, gender identity, gender presentation, and sexual orientation. Now, see, they are very specific on this being offensive verbal comments. So, hmm, now hang on a minute. Let's look at the read policy itself though, on the website. It says, harassment of any kind, including stalking, deliberate intimidation, unwanted physical attention, physical assault, and battery will not be tolerated at C2E2. At C2E2. So, you see, guys, if you manage to punch someone in the face elsewhere, it probably doesn't matter to the people at Read Exhibition because it didn't happen at C2E2. But for some magical reason, we have traveled in time, gone to C2E2, verbally abused someone, and that's why they are rescinding our booth right now, I guess. Maybe. Right. I it's like a minority report, like premeditated crimes. They're anticipating guys, that we're going to harass people. we were just people. trying to do professional business. That's I said it. that three that's times tonight. We just want to get a booth. We want to exhibit. We want to get in front of <laughs> Say that, say that one more, say that again. Minority Report. They just brought that up. The old Steven Spielberg, Tom Cruise Oh, movie. God. That's the point. It's premeditated. They're, they're anticipating what's going to happen just because of someone's ideology. And they just mentioned EVS or Shane said Minority Report. They're doing that. They're, they're convicting them of a crime or harassment before the actual harassment starts just because of their their leanings or their thought that's crazy it's crazy i hate that like lawsuits cost so much money because this is this is a lawsuit sure that i think it's worth trying i'm not a legal expert i don't know shit about it i do love law tube law tube is great uh but uh it, it this is just not right. Like there's, there has to be some way, um, they can correct this and just admit that they judge too soon. 
or right. too too quickly, I guess. Right. And uh, they're refunding everybody. And it's um, a talking it's a talking point about the whole. And by the way, let's take Comics Gate out of it for a minute. Let's just say anybody that has an opposing view toward the C two E two people, that is discrimination. That is mm -hmm. bigotry in the same fashion that they're saying that the people that they're banning have. They're saying that we're banning these people because of the, our, I, their ideology. Well, they're actually portraying or depicting the same ideology that they're afraid of. It's excluding. They're excluding a group of people because of how they think. That's insane. That's like saying no old people can come to our show. You know, like say they're World War II veterans. Maybe they have a different idea about the world than say a 20 year old does. They obviously do. So that's saying, oh, you're old, you can't come to the show. That's crazy. Crazy, that crazy. to assume how people think or how they're going to act. It's just, uh, I can imagine people who bought tickets. Just to, to see go them. see. Just to go see these folks. Yeah. Just to go see them. And it's just crushed. And like, and like, and like EBS just stated, folks in England who banned Frank Miller, Frank Miller is the most, is in the top five iconic comic creators of all time. And they said, oh, because you have this body of work, because someone, someone found offensive, no one can meet him. Really? Really? That's crazy. And by the way, it's fiction. It's what they're yeah. writing or drawing. It's not, they're not political candidates. They're artists. Yes. You know, it's not like Donald Trump or, or Joe Biden is coming to the convention. These are people that are comic book artists. Like, can we get serious about that for a minute? They're comic book artists. They're not congressmen. They're comic book artists. That's it. And it, it's then the fact like you gotta think like these people i mean you, it, it just just looks so bad but they don't care like these when this happens to people they don't care and it looks so bad well, hopefully the c2e2 people will care when such there's an outcry even from liberal when liberal progressive sjw comic book creatives actually come forward maybe and say, wow, even this is a little too much. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah. it's really, it's just Ethan Manskyver and John Malin. It's not Donald Trump. It's just Ethan Manskyver. Relax. He he draws comics about robotic frogs. He's not on CBS and NBC every night talking. And it's not like they're going to go walking up to anybody in the convention and just punch them right in the well, face. Of course. of course they're not. They're trying to sell. They're trying to make money. And it, by allowing them, by excluding them from making money, that's discrimination. In any in any courtroom, that's discrimination, you know? So. Yeah. All right. Of, um, of fans of ours from our DC Marvel work, and say, hey, here's the books that we have made. I'm tired of it. I'm really tired so, of it. So there has been a history, though, of us being harassed um, by a guest at C2. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Well, and the interesting thing is that the guest this year will also be at C2E2. I guess yeah. you guys can tell who it is. Mark Bitchmate Brooks. He'll be in Arthur's Alley. She called him and bitch previous year, he's been a guest as well at C2E2. <laughs> Now, for people are saying, well, you guys are just trying to pinpoint an enemy that you have, trying to make a sacrifice of somebody at C2E2. Well, not necessarily. See, we actually have proof of violent threats. Here we go. This is itself. from uh, a while back, like a year ago, right? Yeah, this is a pretty That's old me. video. Now, unfortunately, the video, original video, which How handsome was, I am. In, was taken down. <laughs> but we have the moment where he basically goes a bit off the rails. You, Dave, Shane, John, if you want to come see Boy. me in person, come see me. I'm going to assume if you're standing in front of me that I'm going to take all this weight I've gained and beat your fucking ass. So other than, other than that, stay the fuck away from me. 
So guys, here you have it. You have proof that basically Mark Brooks says, if I see all these people here, and he named them. <laughs> I used to yeah, laugh at that. John, Shane, and Gabe, <laughs> Altai. He said all these names, and he said, if I see you guys, I'm going to beat you up. Now that is a real threat of violence, okay? Yeah, I know. And for some reason, that is not against the policy of C2E2. Why? Because it didn't happen at C2E2. The issue is, no, anything we did as far as She's harassment so didn't mad. happen I love at C2E2 because so this would have been our first year at C2E2. Oh, they got their horses, dear. Did you guys even harass anybody at no, any other no, previous no. week? Exhibition cons? Any? No, no. But see, that's the thing with this harassment clause and how it's written to us <laughs> and how it's written on their website. Thanks, the website. The term harassment <laughs> can be used as this really liquid, ambiguous thing that you can just kind of form like putty to any tool you need at any given moment. And in this case, somebody... After us being up on the websites uh, for C2E2, five weeks out from the con, roughly went through every hoop. They guided us through the paperwork that now they say that we did wrong. We had a representative <laughs> telling us how to fill it out. We went through multiple hands here. Paid a lot of money that supposedly C2E2 is going to refund us that I don't know why I can't just get a wire transfer, but maybe the check's in the mail. Who knows if they're stand-up people. But they were able to use harassment as a way just to say, yeah, we can form it into a way of just getting you out of here. Um, even though it's kind of hypocrisy or, you know, it's okay for Mark Brooks to make a verbal threat to uh, beat people's ass if he sees them at a public comic con, whether we be guests or we're just attendees. Think about that. The hypocrisy is C2E2. So what's actually happening here is, is a type of cancel culture with the uh, harassment as a utility. If we are in the time where maybe if I believe that biology is a thing, that a biological man is a man, a biological woman is a woman, that that is harassment <laughs> on somebody who thinks differently. And the reality is, it's just the left can't have a debate. The left can't, they're not open to freedom of thought. And uh, rather than have a conversation mm -hmm. Let's cancel people. Is there some power from canceling people? Is this the idea that you guys aren't allowed to work at Marvel and DC anymore? You guys uh, can't be on Kickstarter, get kicked off Kickstarter. You want to go to cons? How about we get you out of there too? The idea is to get us pretty much to a point where we can't produce books, right? I mean, the stuff we were going to that con with is all IP that we have built from the ground up through the magic of crowdfunding with our backers, with our supporters, we made these intellectual properties come to be. These books come to be. The product we were going to sell was creator-owned projects. Now, you're going to say, well, Shane, you're so evil. You can't be involved in comics anymore. You know, they got to take your books right off the shelf. Just last week, McFarlane Toys is making a Kryptonite Doomsday action figure of me that will be in Walmarts, Targets, online retail, all of this stuff. Am I that bad of a person? Evidently, the comic industry can still trade and sell in uh, Shane Davis wares, but <laughs> Shane Davis it's problematic. Wears. I may have hypothetically, in some weird way, <clears throat> with no evidence, harassed somebody, and I can't be allowed to go to a comic con. Just can't. We, you know, I, I was a few weeks ago was no problem. A few days ago, even was no problem. Today, I'm really problematic. Why? Because this upset somebody to see us on the website. Somebody outside of read. But that doesn't absolve Reed from this. Actually, I think it's even worse on Reed because Reed went with the complaint. Whether it was valid or not, whether they <laughs> did research or not, Some the squeaky wheel got the grease, and that was to get rid of us. Now, oh. I know that some of our backers have actually... Let's just pause there for a minute. What's your thoughts, Anthony? I mean, well, yeah, they're true. not getting their money back. Nothing. So yeah, and, and also, you know, you. Yeah, yeah, and also, you know, Shane made the point of he was talking about McFarlane Toys doing a uh, a, a kryptonite Superman based on his designs. Um, I've seen Green Lantern atrocitous stuff in in Walmart and Target figures with artwork by EVS on the back of these action figures and stuff like that. It's so funny that like DC and Marvel, like they said, they they cannot work for them anymore because of their ideology. 
But DC and Marvel have no problem using IPs and things that they created while they were there and still promote it and still show it and still whatever. And at the same time, it's like the C2E2, you know, hope, I mean, I would think they would getting the money back is an easy thing for CT, C2E2 to do. The, the yeah. hard thing is to getting their dignity back or their respect back or their integrity back and on both parties, because I think C2E2 made a blunder. Um, it doesn't matter. You know, this is all about commerce, isn't it, Katie? I mean, it's like yeah. you have customers. Yeah, it is. Like, if you pay the fee to have a table, I don't care if you're a communist party, liberal, anti-abortion party, pro-abortion party, a Nazi party, whatever you are, whatever. They paid money to be there. And they paid money to be there to sell comic books. Again, like I'm saying, I, I don't know if the chat and everybody gets this point. They're not congressmen running for political office. These are comic book creators. Both Mark Brooks and EVS. You're not going there to the convention as a customer to ask them about their politics and talk to them about whatever trans rights or non-rights or... <laughs> They're, they're selling their IP comic books. This is not, this should not be, this should be debated on YouTube and on X and on Facebook and whatever, but it shouldn't be consumer facing. Like it shouldn't be the customer who goes to a convention because he loves Ethan Van Skyver's artwork. Shouldn't be asking for refunds. Okay. And then by the way, Katie, I'm, I'm in my fifties. I have this thing. If you don't like something, my grandmother used to tell me on the TV, you change the channel. Yeah. You don't like, if you don't well, like, for people at this convention, they could just slip the other way and keep walking. Just walk, walk past the bit. You don't need to make eye contact. You don't, well, if you what? want just put them, put them at the farthest end what? of whatever the end of the whole, the whole building, like the, like the one little corner at the convention, okay. that gets the, the, the least traffic. Just walk put them back. The put them back there if you want to, but give them their table. You just, know, give just them walk their table. Past the table. Just walk past it. It doesn't matter. It's just a table. It's well, like, and the fact, like this is this is a trend. And this is a way for them too. It's as the please. culture in itself, and and the comic book industry it seems like like they really want to destroy indie creators. Great. Like they, they, that's what they really want to do. Yeah. Um, and you and you know that's another thing oh, like people people in the chat and Katie you know you talk about indie creators yeah creators like EVS and John Malin and 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 Dan Fraga and all those people they're make and Aaron Lopresti Graham Nolan they're making a lot of money in crowdfunding right yeah but they right. aren't selling that many comics like even even a uh, rip averse, you know, they'll say, Oh, we made a $1.3 million, but we only sold 10,000 comics, right? Katie, if Marvel or DC, if they're really worried about indie creators, if any of their comics sold five to 10,000 comics, they'd be out of business. You know yeah. what I mean? Because they're yeah. selling comics for four ninety five or something like that, you know? Right. Whereas indie creators that are crowdfunding, yeah, they have like myself. $15 packages, $35 packages, $100 packages. Same thing with the S. Right. He makes money on eBay. Eric July makes money selling everything crappy product along with his book. So you're selling $100 packages to a lot less people. They, we, the independent creator is not even nicking the market. Okay, we're our own thing. But the thing is, the thing about these three creators, John Malin used to draw Cable and X-Force. Shane Davis draw, drew Superman trade paperbacks that you could get at Barnes & Noble right now. And EVS's Rebirth, Green Lantern, and Flash alone revitalized the DC universe and the industry around 2005, 2006. This is stuff when they were in the mainstream, they already built their reputation. Okay. 
no matter how they think now, it doesn't matter. John Byrne, who is like I brought up several times, the 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 classic X-Men artist that all comics today are influenced by. John mm. Byrne is a son of a bitch. Curmudgeon. People do not like him. But guess what? If he shows up at a convention, which he doesn't do anymore, there would be lines of people around the block. And guess what? They don't care who he voted for or what he believes in. He's just a legendary artist. Starenko, who you have in your credits there, yeah. he's super ultra conservative. But you know what? I would cut my left nut off to go sit and meet Jim Starenko and get an get my Nick Fury Shield number one autographed. Okay, he's a legend, legend. That's all that they should be. All these folks should be judged on their work, which is a whole yeah. other topic. But it's crazy. C two E two is just harassing these creators because of their ideology, not their actions. Sticks and stones. It's sticks yeah. and stones. Yeah. Arm day, but will they be issuing refunds to people who buy passes just to see these guys? So far, no, from what I've heard. Probably I not. correct it, but right now I've it sounds like nobody's getting their their refund. I would, say, yet. I would say no. They're not gonna do that. Yeah. And uh also he says just them having the audacity to not be broke or homeless and on the verge of self deletion is considered harassment to these clowns. That's right. Yeah. Anybody trying to make a living is harassment, I guess, you know. Yeah. So stupid. All right, let's see. Let's see what else. Us. Well, I was going to see you too, just to see you guys. Now that you guys won't be attending, you've been canceled from this con. What do I do? We would recommend that those of you who are going to see you too, just to see Shane, Ethan, or John to reach out to read exhibition and tell them I would like a refund on my C2E2. Yeah, I think so. I think you need to do that. Exhibitor which is the main reason I'm coming down for in the first place. Yeah, I don't want to accommodate them. Weed is a company that has any honor at all. Fuck being honorable, just has any honor. Deep, deep no in the these people. Dig, dig, dig deep for it, Reed. Refund these people because they were coming to see us. And if you don't want us there, then if they request a refund, give them the refund. Um, if you guys will, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification. Let us know what you think about I this. I definitely will. Um, and share it out. Tag read in it. Get this video out there. Um, and, and also, uh, extend level up is still up. You can still go back. It. We're getting ready to cross a hundred and eleven thousand dollars. This is the next book to go to print. Nine Lives Comics, and uh, Inglorious Rex is at the printer now. Inglorious Rex two, and we'll be shipping that fairly soon. I'll leave you guys with a trailer for this smash hit book. Catch you guys again with another video. Oh, nice, Shane. Very good video. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, yeah, you know, my feel, I agree with them. I think, uh, everybody who, uh, who has a ticket, who only bought the ticket to come see us, uh, should definitely ask for a refund and demand a refund. You absolutely deserve it. Opinion nerded, uh, for $5 says trying to cop that blood honey now, <laughs> trying to cop that blood honey. Uh, but on Indiegogo, it says closed. Where do I go to get it? So if you click the uh, links below this video, you're going to see our eBay store, a link to our eBay store. This one doesn't, so you'd have to buy it separately. So we'll just go to our eBay store, shop around. Real stories for me. And I, again, I recognize that I'm a boomer for saying stuff like that, but uh, that's how I feel. So I, I checked out. I do read the old stuff. I think it's better. Uh, Magnum Express, join the channel. Thank you. Con Books and Cahoots says, uh, dual con and out. But again, you know, it's like, <clears throat> it's a nice reminder. Um, this is why Comic Skate exists. This is why we made Comic Skate. Uh, you know, into um, a club of people that rely on each other. Like, you know, uh, if this were just happening to me alone, I feel like uh, it would be a lot tougher to deal with. Um, the fact that uh, other people can relate to me, the Comic Skate Kings, other comic skaters. Now, you know, John, certainly John Malin, Shane Davis, this is the first time this has happened to him. You know, the first time. Um, you, you stand up against, uh, SJWs in comics and they take notice of you. Um, we've seen it happen to nice people, like really nice people, uh, who are conservative. 
and uh, it will continue to happen. I, I guess I, I didn't want this to happen. I, you know, when Shane, here's what happened. Like Shane and John planned this and then invited me. And I said, I, well, what are you, are you sure? <laughs> All righty. Uh, Snafu certified stud muffin <laughs> for four ninety nine. Rumiko Takahashi is a better writer than the F and T chumps. Flash Eric and all of them can eat a D. Also, how long until snacks till Zack Snyder two point happens? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, listen to this. Uh, Rumiko Takahashi is an amazing uh, uh, animator and and responsible for so many uh, good good shows and. Uh, start to chat off because it's slowing everything down no i love that show it's great and you know what you know I mean, it's it's sad that that's what happened um that i just because i love inuasha and people just don't seem to understand what the what the story is about and you know what that's okay go watch it it's it's on a it's on hulu right now i believe and uh crunchy roll so and uh also, how long until uh, Zack Snyder 2.0 happens? I don't know. What do you think, Anthony? Well, the Zack Snyder 2.0 is always, you know, is is always can always happen. So it's uh, inevitable, you know, that uh, that at some point those uh, FNT guys will, you know, um, trip over themselves and. Uh, We'll see what happens. And as far as the uh, the animes that you just mentioned that I can't pronounce so well, uh, my son watches all that stuff, and uh, he tries to get me into it. But uh, but anyway, it's not everybody's taste. It's, no, it's but not. The is, but the thing is, you know, it's like that stuff is out there, and um, again, people, I cannot get over the people that come at other people and they're discussing these fictional animated characters like mm. they're real people. Um, I hate to break it to anybody, but they're not. Like the characters and the fictional beasts and, uh, and, and species and humans and superhumans on all these shows, these are works of fiction. They're not in the real world. And you don't need to be hung up. You know, the stuff that they, you had, they came out of you with was ridiculous. And, you know, that's like me saying, oh, you know, my sexy v Venusian warrior princess. Um, this is not a real person. This is a drawing on a piece of paper. And so are all the anime that we watch there drawings and then they're put in computers and put together people need to get a grip a little bit on reality and fiction and um yes and again all this stuff is crazy and as far as the fnt chomps you know writer wise you know um these guys are you know i'm gonna say something like uh you know spill some tea here just because you have a YouTube following doesn't make you a writer. Also doesn't make you a, a talented person. Also doesn't make you, like in Eric July's case, um, from what I've seen, he can and, – and by the way, I'm going to say this broadly. Anyone who says that they're going to be the next Stan Lee, well, maybe you should go read Stan Lee. Because, and I'm not going to be pretentious, but I have a, I have a bookshelf back there. Back there, back there, wherever I am in the room. I have all of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's early Fantastic Four and uh, Sergeant Fury and uh, and Steve Ditko and Stan Lee's Spider-Man. I have volumes of that. And I read it when I was growing up because I'm that old. So the truth of the matter is, is that you have to have a sense of history and I used to be an English teacher and I taught Shakespeare and Chaucer and American literature and English literature. So I've read a whole lot. And what you do is you take and absorb all that knowledge over the years, like the anime you're watching that people are criticizing you for whatever that 
stupid shit. It's fiction and nonfiction. You absorb it all. Yeah. And then you tell stories. But、mm-hmm. I can tell a story about a a warrior from Venus all day long. Yeah. Guess, there you go. But guess what? She's not real. She's in my head. And guess what? I can do anything I want with her on a piece of paper or a movie or a song. I'm a songwriter. That the the music you are listening to, Misty America, that was me singing. That was my band. Okay. Yeah. You、that、sounds so good, by the way. But the point is, is it's fiction. It's not real. So right. So everybody get off their high horse about all this stuff. And but again, bringing up the YouTubers who all of a sudden are comic book creators. Well. You know, Logan Paul isn't a real wrestler or fighter. He's a YouTube personality, so you can fake it for as long as you want, but eventually, your credibility will come out. You know, and that's no diss on Logan Paul because I've seen him wrestle. He actually knows what he's doing, I guess. But the point is, the point is, just because you're a YouTuber or an influencer, doesn't mean you can inspire anyone with your with your creative talent or lack thereof. You know.